Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson where I'm going to talk about the country versus the city or the city versus the country. This is going to be a comparison of things that you would see in the city versus things that you would see in the country. But it's more than just a vocabulary lesson. It's more than just a lesson about the phrases. Um it's a lesson about how to compare things in English. So, I should have put that in the topic as well because you'll hear me use a lot of phrases where I compare one thing to the other. That's where you look at the things that are the same or I will contrast the city versus the country where I'll look at how things are different. So, listen closely to the phrases I use. Listen to the sentences that I use as well during this lesson um because it will be more than just a lesson about um factories and farms and all of the differences and similarities of the country and city. So, uh listen closely. You can see that the city can have pollution and smog. So, because the city has so many people and because there are so many cars and buses and trucks and because there are factories usually on the outskirts of the city. When you talk about a city um When you talk about the outskirts, it's the area immediately around the city. Sometimes there are a lot of factories and so you have a lot of pollution. This is a problem all over the world. It's more of a problem in some countries than others. It really depends on how your government regulates pollution. In Canada, we do have pollution. In fact, we get a little bit of pollution from our neighbors to the south. I won't mention what country that is. I don't want them to feel bad but we do get some pollution. Um in the country, you have what we call clear blue skies, okay? Uh I know the state of Montana. I think it's called big sky country. Um so, if you ever visit the United States and go to the state of Montana where there are many, many farms. Um maybe Brent can verify this because Brent is American. Uh Brent is from American English with this guy but I think Montana is called big sky country. When you are out in the country, the skies are usually very blue and the skies just look enormous because there are no tall buildings and so, you can see very clearly. So, when we compare and contrast the city versus the country, first of all, the city might have some pollution. There might be bad air quality. The countryside generally doesn't have that ever. Uh let's go to the next slide here. In the city, you will most likely have public transportation and in the country, you will most likely see a lot of pickup trucks. So, one of the advantages of living in the city is that you have buses. You have a subway. You might call it a metro. Uh you might call it um you might just have the train. You might take a streetcar or a city bus. It's very cool when you live in the city because you have access to so many ways to get about. In English, when you need to get about or move about, it just means you need to get from one place to another. So, you have public transportation. That's the general term for all of it. In the country, people have cars. They drive vans but you'll see a lot of pickup trucks. Um when I go for my walk along my road, Um mostly I see pickup trucks going by. They're not all farmers but many of them are farmers. So, a big difference between the city versus the country is you will see a lot more public transportation in the city and you will see a lot more pickup trucks in the country. Um so, I mentioned this a little bit already. On the outskirts of the city, you will probably have many factories. If you go to Toronto, There are many factories that I drive past on my way to the city of Toronto. There are car factories. We also sometimes call them plants. So, I have a friend who works at the car factory but I actually say he works at the car plant. So, excuse me. In English, factory and plant are interchangeable sometimes. So, we have car plants where the it makes it sound like they grow cars there, doesn't it? But that's not what they do. We have factories Out in the country, you have more farms. We have laws in Canada and there usually are laws around the world that factories need to be in certain areas and we usually do not allow factories to be built out in the country. We want to maintain the countryside. So, uh, (laughs) yeah, Brent is asking if I'm gonna talk about the different smells. I actually have a slide for that, Brent. It's a little towards the end 
uh you might be gone for work by the time I get there. So, factory versus farm. Um yes, we don't build factories out in the country. So, in the country, you will see more farms. A farm can have a barn, sometimes a machine shed where they store their farm equipment and then there's usually a farm house as well. Um which leads me to my next slide. I know cities have houses but cities also have apartment buildings. So, an apartment building is a large building with many small apartments in it that you can either rent or buy. Generally, you rent an apartment and if you buy it, we usually call it a condo or a condominium. So, just a slight difference there for you to know. Out in the country, everyone lives in a house. We do not have apartment buildings out in the country. We have houses. If a house is on a farm, we sometimes call it a farmhouse although generally, we just uh call it a house. So, you will have large multi-story buildings in the city. You will have single-story buildings like houses in the country. In the city, you're more likely to find a shopping mall. In the country, we have things called corner stores. So, a store that we call a corner store is where two roads meet. So, often, we have a crossroads out in the country. So, two roads that cross each other and that's where you're most likely going to find a corner store, maybe a small hardware store if you need tools. In the city, you're just going to find more stores. You're going to find outlet malls. You're going to find strip malls. You're going to find shopping malls. You're going to find grocery stores and they're all going to be much larger and food is going to usually be cheaper. If I go to the corner store to buy milk, it's about seven dollars for a bag of milk. Yes, in Canada, we buy milk in bags. Um if I go to the grocery store in the closest town or city, milk is about five dollars a bag. So, uh food out in the country, it's harder to get because it's usually only at a corner store and it's usually more expensive. So, again, in the city, you'll find shopping malls. You'll find outlet malls. You'll find grocery stores. You'll find big box stores. I did a lesson uh, a while ago on different stores. I think last spring. Um if you do a search for Bob the Canadian stores, you'll see it. Um where I talk about different stores. In the country, you'll find corner stores. We sometimes also call them convenience stores because they're convenient. Um well, here's a big difference. This is something People were asking which I prefer, the city or the country. Um the city is very well lit at night. The city is a very bright place at night. Even in the middle of the night, the city can be very very bright and that can be cool because it it gives you safety as well, right? When you walk around in the city at night, it's not dark and so it's a safe place and you can see. The bad thing about that though is you can't see the night sky. It's very hard to see stars in the city. You can see the moon when you look up because the moon can be bright at certain times of the month but generally in the city, it's very bright. There are a lot of lights in the city. So, that can be good for your safety but it can be bad if you like looking at the stars. In the country, it's very dark. In the countryside, it's very dark at night. It's very easy for me to see stars at night um because it's there's no lights around me. I can see my neighbor's house in the distance. He's very far away but generally, the city is very um well lit at night. The countryside is very dark. It's not nice if your car breaks down at night in the country because you're just out what we would say in the middle of nowhere in the pitch dark and you can't see anything. So, I used a couple phrases there. Um if your car breaks down in the middle of nowhere and it's pitch dark, um it's not a very nice experience. Um generally, this isn't 100% true but in the city, you refer to um what you drive on as the street. So, a city has streets and a country has roads. The reason I say this isn't 100% true is a city can have a road as well. A city might have an avenue or a boulevard or a street or a road but generally, we would use street when we're talking about the things we drive our cars on in the city. What street do you live in? Um what's the what's your house number on that street? Okay. 
in the country we generally refer to them as roads. I live on a road. You might call it a country road. Um there are paved roads and dirt roads or gravel roads out in the country but generally just a slight distinction. Um if you are in the city, you probably live on a street. If you are in the country, you probably live on a road. And again, remember in the city, you might live on an avenue or a boulevard uh, or a cul-de-sac or uh, a street. There are many names for different um roads in the city. Notice I use roads and never mind. Let's keep moving. In the city, you will usually find buildings. Sorry, I'm just gonna check my notes here to see how far along I am. Sometimes I lose track and I spend too much time talking about each item. So, give me two seconds here. Oh yeah, I should really speed up a bit, shouldn't I? In the city, you find buildings. Uh generally, every square foot of a city has a building on it or is covered in concrete. Sometimes, you will have parks and gardens or what we might call green space. It's nice when a city has a lot of green space. So, that's a place where you have grass like a park. In the country, you mostly just see fields. When I drive to work, some of you who have watched my other videos, you'll notice there's just fields. If I show you a scene uh, out the window of my car, I'm surrounded by fields. So, um this isn't 100% true. Um sometimes in the city, you'll have vacant lots or you'll have undeveloped areas but generally in the city, there are lots of buildings and in the country, there are lots of fields. Um in the city, the side of the road usually has a sidewalk. In the country, the side of the road usually has a ditch. (laughs) So, a sidewalk is a concrete or paved area. It might be gravel or stone that you walk on uh and it's just a nice way to safely walk in the city. Out in the country, we do not have sidewalks. We have the side of the road. So, when I go for a walk, I walk along the side of the road. There is no sidewalk there. Um it's just the edge of the road and then every country road usually has a ditch. A ditch is where they remove the earth so that water can flow away when it rains. So, if you look here, the you can see the water at the bottom of the ditch. So, in the city, you have a sidewalk. In the country, you have a ditch. Very different uh very different things on the sides of the road. Um in the city, you are more likely to have a traffic jam or be caught in rush hour. Um so, again, I do wanna mention, I'm using a lot of phrases to compare things. So, I'm talking about one thing versus the other. So, if you listen to how I describe it, the format I use, that's as important during this lesson uh, as the words I'm teaching you. So, in the city, you will have rush hour but out in the country, it's just open road. Um I always laugh because my phone at the end of every day, it tells me what the traffic is going to be like on my way home and it usually says um traffic is light. You'll be home in 21 minutes. Every day, it says that because there when I drive home, I see maybe four cars on my way home, okay? I do not experience rush hour. So, in the city, you have traffic jams. In the country, you have open road. Um you don't always have traffic jams in every city. Some cities are very well designed. They analyze the traffic flow and they design their city to allow traffic to flow smoothly. So, but generally in the country, you will have open road. Um let me see here. Yep, we're good. Um in the city, you are more likely to have crowds. In the country, you're more likely to experience solitude. You're more likely to be by yourself if you choose to be. Um I know when I go to the city, I love the crowds. I love going to downtown Toronto and I like walking along. Notice I pronounced so when I say Toronto slowly, it sounds like that but I really usually just call it Toronto. So, let me let me use my normal voice. When I go to Toronto, I love the crowds. Um I just love the fact that there's people everywhere. It's super fun. Um you just see people walking and there's people from you know every part of the world living in Toronto. But in the country when I go for a walk, I'm by myself and I have a lot of solitude. I can just enjoy myself as I walk along and it's very very peaceful. 
Um, so Brent from American English with this guy asked about this earlier. Uh, we're just going to talk about smell. The city smells in some spots and the country smells but for different reasons. A lot of times the city will smell because it's not very clean. Maybe the sanitation department hasn't cleaned up and there might be lots of garbage. The yellow thing way over there is called a garbage dumpster. You might have a lot of dumpsters full of garbage. Uh your city might just have lots of garbage laying on the street that needs to be cleaned up and eventually that smells. Um factories can pollute uh can pollute the air and cause the air to smell as well. So, cities can smell. Um thankfully, the city of Toronto is a very clean city. That's the city I have the most experience with by the way is the city of Toronto. It's a very clean city. It doesn't smell a lot but it does smell sometimes when I go there. The country side, the countryside smells for a different reason. Usually, it smells when farmers spread manure on their fields. So, manure for lack of a better way to describe it is poop from animals and usually farmers spread it on their fields because it's good fertilizer but it certainly does smell. It's not the nicest smelling stuff in the world. One of the things that's really annoying about living in the country is that the internet is very slow and it's very expensive. The internet that I use here is very expensive. The speed is enough to do a live stream but it costs about five times more than it would in the city. In the city, internet is very fast and internet is very cheap. In the countryside, internet is very slow and internet is very expensive. So, it's one of the things where thank you for being members because my internet connection here um is very expensive. So, you help pay for that. So, that's awesome. Um if I lived in the city, it would just be a lot cheaper. So, it's it's too bad um but I think that's the way it goes. I'm hoping that uh Elon Musk is building a satellite internet system that's supposed to be good for people out in the country. We'll see when that's available. I'll get it and I'll let you know. Um And then related is the fact that out in the country, your phone has bad reception. So, that's how we talk about when you don't have any bars. Like when you look in the picture there, you can see it says bad reception and there are no bars on their phone. Um so, out in the country, sometimes your cell phone or smartphone doesn't work. There are places where my phone doesn't work even in this amazing country of Canada but in the city, you usually have great reception. Now, I do know it depends on where you live. There are parts of the world where um even if you live in the city, your reception isn't great but generally in the countryside or out in the country, you have bad reception in some places and in the city, you have great reception. Um we had this mentioned a bit earlier. There is a lot of convenience in the city. It's very convenient to live in the city. Um, if you want to go to a coffee shop, you can probably walk to one. If you want to meet a friend at a restaurant, you can probably just take a taxi or an Uber or walk there very quickly. There are many things to do in the city and they're usually very close. So, we say that that's very convenient. On the flip side, in the country, things are less convenient but there's a lot more peace and quiet. If you watch my other YouTube channel, you'll know I taught the phrase peace and quiet. Um peace is when things are calm and quiet is when there's no noise. So, sometimes it's a trade-off, okay? A trade-off is when you know something isn't great but there's benefits anyway. So, in the city, you don't have peace and quiet but you have a lot of convenience. But in the countryside, you don't have a lot of convenience but you have a lot of peace and quiet. So, it's kind of a trade-off. You have to decide which one do you like better. I like peace and quiet more than convenience right now but as you heard, when I get older, I might prefer, I might prefer convenience over peace and quiet. Um Bernadette, thank you so much for becoming a member. You're awesome. That's great of you. Thank you for supporting my channel and the work I do. In the city, you have a lot of pedestrians. In the country, you have a lot of tractors. Um so, this isn't 100% true. When you drive out in the countryside, you might see tractors but you probably won't see pedestrians. 
in the city, you will see pedestrians. Pedestrians are people who walk on the sidewalks. At least they should walk on the sidewalks. Um but definitely in the city, you will see pedestrians and in the country from time to time out in the country, you will see tractors especially during harvest and planting season. So, in the spring and fall here in Canada, you see a lot of tractors out on the roads in the spring when they are planting, they're driving from field to field and you see them a lot in the fall when they are harvesting. Um in the city, you have neighbors and you probably can hear them through the walls if you live in an apartment building. In the country, you have neighbors and sometimes they're literally that far away, okay? So, uh it's just a difference in distance, okay? Um when you live in the city, you might know your neighbors well. When you live in the country, even though they live far away, you also usually know them very well. So, I have neighbors that live three or four kilometers away from me and I still call them my neighbors and I still talk to them all the time. They are my neighbors. When I go for a walk, I walk past a couple of different farms and both of those farms, I consider my neighbors. So, both the city and country have neighbors but when you are in the city, they are very close to you. When you're out in the country, they are a little further away. Um so, there's animals in the city and there's animals out in the country. Um they're a little different. Um in the city, you might have pests. So, pests are things like mice and rats and different rodents. You might have squirrels and raccoons in your city depending on where you live in the world. I know there are cities uh that have different pests than what we have here in Canada but you definitely have animals when you live in the city and they can get into your garbage. They can get into your trash. It's not always a nice thing. Out in the country, we have animals as well. We would call them wildlife instead. So, we have things like deer. We have raccoons and squirrels as well um but certainly, you have animals whether you live in the country or you live in the city. Um I think I got this mixed up. I think I put the wrong one on the wrong side. In the in the country, you have scenery. People like to go for a drive out in the country because there's a lot of beautiful scenery. You might have something like a sunflower field. You might have um just really large areas where there's crops growing. So, out in the country, there might be more trees. There's a lot of scenery. That's why people go for a country drive. So, a lot of times, people from the city will go for a drive out in the country because there's a lot of beautiful scenery. Whereas, in the city, you might have an apartment with a view but you might have an apartment with no view. So, that's why I put this picture here. So, this apartment has a view of the wall of the next building. So, there's a big difference between what you see when you're out in the country versus living in the city. Sometimes, in the country, you have beautiful views and there's lots of scenery. My drive to school is very, very beautiful um and very, very enjoyable. Um when I lived in the city, I had literally had a bedroom in a basement and my view out of the basement window was of the wall of the house beside me. Let's see here. Out sorry, in the city, you can experience the nightlife, okay? So, let's say you like going out dancing. Maybe you like going to movies. Maybe you like meeting friends at a restaurant or bar. There is a nightlife in the city. You can go out at night and there are many things you can do to entertain yourself. In the country, there is no nightlife, okay? <laughs> it's just dark outside but you have a quiet life. So, in the city, you can go out with friends and have a good evening. In the country, you can read a book by the wood stove and just enjoy the quiet. This is related a little bit to peace and quiet as well but certainly in the city because it's more convenient, you can enjoy the nightlife Whereas in the country, you just enjoy the quiet life. Um let me see where I am here. Yes, good. In the sorry, I'm getting a little uncomfortable. This doesn't usually happen. I need to sit less in my life. Yesterday, I sat all day. That's not good. Um in the city, there are usually lots of jobs. In the country, there are few jobs, okay? So, out in the countryside, if you want a job, literally, you can work for a farmer or you can work for a company 
that services farms. Okay, there's there's not a lot of jobs that live out in the country. In the city, there are usually many many opportunities to find work. You can work in a store. You can work in a factory. You can work in a shop. You can work. There's usually just many many places where you can go to find a job. Honestly, out in the country, there are not many places to work. Okay, even nowadays, farms don't usually hire a lot of people. Because they can do so much work with tractors and other pieces of equipment. 